Hogan Gidley, White House Principal Deputy Press Secretary. So, Hogan, you heard John and I kind of going back and forth. Uh, if you don't read what you can get your hands on, at least you could be, you know, making use of that time. Let's start with Don McGahn and this decision uh, to instruct him not to comply with handing over documents before his testimony later in the month. Is this a final decision? Listen, Don McGahn does not have the legal right to disclose these documents, and Jerry Nadler does not have the legal right to see them. Jerry Nadler knows this. This is all about playing politics. And as John just mentioned, 99% of this uh, report, unredacted, sits right now in a skiff, a secure mm -hmm. location. Not one single Democrat has gone to read it yet. And it's because the Democrats don't care about getting information. They care about getting this president. And that has been very clear from the start of this. The information that came out for everyone in this country to see and understand was there was no collusion, no obstruction. They wanted it to be so true. They believed all the people on the Democrat side and in the media that said they had evidence, stone cold proof that there was collusion with the president of the United States and a foreign government proved not to be the case. They had no evidence, no proof. They pushed a lie on the American people for more than two years. Now, I understand why they don't want to cop to that, because they would be admitting the last two years of their life was a complete and total lie. But the fact is, uh, this president has done nothing wrong, and now the world knows it. You know, I, I want to get to Speaker Nancy Pelosi and what she had today and get your reaction, ordering Don McGahn not to comply with the subpoena. She tweeted this, from family separation and border security to health care and pre-existing conditions, the Trump administration is standing in the way of countless legitimate efforts by Congress to get Americans answers. This unprecedented stonewalling is unacceptable. And you say what? I have no idea what Nancy Pelosi is talking about 99% uh, of the time, and it might just tip the oh scales to 100% just now. We have been more transparent in this process. We gave over 1.4 million documents, 30-plus hours of just Don McGahn testimony, by the way, uh, to, to the special counsel, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses, 500 warrants, uh, 40 FBI agents, 19 attorneys, and a partridge in a pear tree. Mm -hmm. And we now know there's no collusion and no obstruction. We we have been moving the ball forward on countless fronts, whether it's defeating ISIS, remaking the judiciary, changing the tax code, incredible results with the American economy, uplifting people from the bottom of the scale to the top of the scale. And Nancy Pelosi in the 100 plus days they've had control of the Democrat Congress has done nothing except play political games. And it's disgusting. Well, and that, that part about Democrats not reading what is even less redacted than what went out to the public in Congress earlier yeah. in a skiff uh, is something that you really want well, the American people to know because they could go down the hall and read some of this. I want to move on. Absolutely. But listen, uh, real quickly, Harris, this isn't oversight. This is overreach. They're right. pushing these things. They want information that they know they don't have the right to see, and they know it's illegal well, they can for us change to give the it rules over to on them. grand jury uh, 6E, and they could course, see what's underneath that blanket in grand jury testimony if yes, they wanted but they're, to. They're in the majority. All right, I got to move on to the FBI director, okay. Chris Ray, telling a Senate panel today that he would not describe government surveillance such as that conducted on the president's 2016 campaign as "quote unquote" spying, as Attorney General William Barr has said. Uh, is this a break between the FBI? and the way that the White House sees it. Listen, I think it, it, what's more important here is the way that the American people see it, and that's this. We now know someone was sent into the uh, Trump campaign to infiltrate the campaign and get information. We know that a FISA warrant was obtained on a fake, phony, fraudulent dossier. Uh, we know that the Trump campaign was, in fact, spied upon, and that uh, all of these things occurred under the watchful eye of the Barack Obama administration. All of these things occurred with Russian so meddling in the election under the Barack Obama administration, and they did nothing about it. And the president has been right about this from the beginning in that we have to find out not just uh, how we got here, but who started this whole thing in the first place. That's important. I think that the attorney right. general and others are going to get to the bottom of it. The American people deserve that information. Well, and ranking member Doug Collins has said, too, of the House Judiciary, he has questions and, uh, and would want to ask them specifically of Bob Mueller about how exactly things got started. Real quickly, one last word on this. Why is the word spying so incendiary? 
I don't know, because Democrats sure have used it for the better part of two years as related to the case against Donald Trump. But now when the tide turns and everything looks like it could be the Democrats who are guilty here, they don't want to use the word spying. They're shying away from that. Listen, what do you call it when someone goes and tries to get information? What do you call it when a warrant is obtained on you on fraudulent information? I bet if you asked the majority of the American people, they'd sure call it spying. The American people deserve to know the truth here, and so does Donald Trump, so, uh, who was spied upon uh, in this campaign. What's interesting about that is what Barr said, and, and, and you're continuing to hear it today, that the spying, not necessarily pejorative, if in fact it was surveilled uh, legally. So we'll move on now. Republican senators are set to attend a 3 p.m. meeting right behind you there in the White House to talk about the administration's soon-to-be-released immigration plan. What can you tell us about what's upcoming in that meeting and anything about this plan that you can share? Sure. Well, I can't get ahead of the president, as you well know, uh, but I can tell you that we do have a crisis at our southern border, and our immigration system hasn't really been touched since the 1960s. It's time to update it. We've got to protect the American people. And it's funny you talked about Nancy Pelosi saying we haven't done much. They haven't come to the table at all, even though people are dying in this country based on people who come, come here illegally and unlawfully. And Democrats repeatedly stand with those hundreds of thousands of people who have no right to be here, as opposed to hundreds of millions of American citizens. They're going to have to answer that one way or the other. But the fact is, this president is taking the lead. He's not waiting on Congress. We've got to move forward with a plan that not only addresses the crisis as we know it today, we've mm -hmm. got to close those loopholes on the so southern border, but we have to put forth a complete plan that actually makes a lot of sense, that seems rational, that actually props up merit-based immigration and not the system we have today that is, that is uh, depressing wages and hurting the American worker. We know today that Border Patrol has caught in the last 10 days 30,000 people crossing illegally. They say that that is an unsustainable number. The drumbeat continues of a crisis at the border. Hogan Gidley outside the White House today. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much.